Hello my dears and welcome to my channel. As always, I am very happy and grateful that you've chose to spend your time with me and I hope that you're all doing well, but if not, I hope things will get better for you soon. And the ways you can support my channel is like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe so I can appease the mighty algorithm and be seen by more people and hopefully help someone to make a decision either way on a deck or hit the notification bell of when you want to be notified of when a new video comes out. And we have the Animal Totem Tarot. And it was created by Lisa Robinson and illustrated by Eugene Smith. And it was published by Llewellyn on uh, March 8th, uh, 2016. And it retails for $29.99. And the box itself is pretty big. It is eight and a quarter height across it's five and a half and the width is two inches and it is a magnetic box it's got the and on the bottom it has the um, barcode and stuff and it does have the title on all sides but the bottom and on the back, we have some teaser cards, and um, it says, Journey into the realm of the animals and discover the messages that await in spirit. Animal totems are powerful allies and guides for those who are seeking connection to their abundant energy. Soaring above, or swimming below, crawling along the earth, or silent, silently stalking in the shadows. All the animals have their own spiritual lessons and insights to help you along your way. In all their grace and wild beauty, animals possess wisdom beyond words. Let them speak to the deepest part of you. Okay. And on the inside, we have some lovely artwork. And we have this big honking guidebook. Yeah, this is, this is pretty big. <laughs> go ahead and explore that afterwards and on the inside you have your card holder and uh, it as with most of these that are made like this they, they don't really hold all the cards unfortunately but with this thing inside of it yeah they the cards shouldn't move around Okay, and the insert does come out. I'm not going to take it out because I always have trouble getting it back in. But as you can see, um, this is um, a pretty well-loved deck. <laughs> it's got some cosmetic thing and, you know, but I have used this and, yeah, I don't know if you can see scratches on it, but I've had this thing for a while and this is one of my favorite decks that I have. Okay, so the cards themselves are a little bit smaller, as you can see, than the traditional Rider weight. Uh, the card is four and a half and across, 2.75, and the width of the deck is about an inch. And reversals will be revealed if you use reversals with your tarot. Okay. And with all of my tarot um, videos, I do side-by-sides with a um, Rider Waite Smith deck. So you can kind of gauge if it's something you want to add to your collection. Okay. And Lisa has a few other decks, and I have one of them, Cirque du Tarot. And then she has two more, which are the Soul Cats Tarot and the Mermaid Tarot. And then Eugene um, has come out with uh, Tarot Made Easy and Luelle's Classic Tarot. Okay, so go ahead and comparison on this and as you can see it does have 
the number and the title. And this is a very colorful deck. I really love this deck. So that is the Major Arcana, and next we are going to move into the Pentacles. I think this is 
probably my favorite card out of the deck. <laughs> is, the pig just looks so happy and she is just content. She has everything she needs, just like the Queen of Pentacles. <laughs> All right, so that is the Pentacles. And next we are going to go into the lungs. And as we go through the deck, you can kind of notice that um, there's no question as to what suit it is because they've made it very um, easy to identify which suit it is. Although I did, until I learned um, about the animals in the cards, I kind of had to look in the guidebook and to see the correlation because some of the animals I was like, huh. But once I looked in the guidebook and started using the cards, yeah, I could really see how they fit. Yeah, because some of these animals, I'm like, I, I don't know anything about them. So it was also nice that um, I could also use that as a learning and learn about animals that I didn't know about. Or that I didn't know too much about. Okay, so that is the wands. And next we have the swords. I love pandas. They're just so goofbally. <laughs> oh, this one's so sad. Yeah. I didn't like that card, but it was a very true um, visual.
Okay, so that is the sword suit. And then last but not least, we have our cups. This one's a sad one, too. Yeah, when I looked at this car the first time, I was like, where's the animal? And then I was like, oh, it's right there. <laughs> So that is pretty much the deck. And the cards, yes, they are great. I've, they're bendy and they have stood the test of time with me. All right, so let's look at this chunk of a book. It is 384 pages long and you got your front and then you got the back. Yes, are teaser cards. Okay. So we start with about the author and the artist. The title. And dedication and author uh, acknowledgments. artist acknowledgments and contents and this is a pretty nice book it's got a lot of stuff in here and go into a preface where they talk about um, their background and how they got interested in things and um, when they started their tarot journey and just a little bit of background on themselves and then you have your introduction and just basically goes into um, the um, different chapters and what they have And then goes into a beginner for chapter one and goes into a background of the tarot. And then aligning the tarot with the energy of the animals. Uh, basically just talks about the, um, what she did with the deck and kind of explains her reasoning for what she did with the deck. And then um, the how-to of a reading. 
um, and then goes into suggestions of how to do a reading and asking a question and then basically um, suggestions on how to come up with a question and then congratulate you on doing your first reading. Okay, then we go into chapter two, power animals, animal totems, and animal guides. So she goes into background of animals and goes through um, the categories power animals, animal guides totem, animal archetypes, elemental energies, and animals we fear. And then understanding the journey for chapter three. And she goes into explaining more of the guidebook and um, goes into the last section, practicing um, drawing a card a day. And before you begin, talks about that a little bit. Oop. And then we go into chapter five, which is the major arcana. And this, this is a very detailed guidebook. I mean, I, I love that she did this. Okay, so we go to uh, the fool, and then she tells you the name of the animal and gives you a message from that animal and you get your picture and then goes into um, kind of like a how the fool and the grasshopper go together and then she goes into she breaks it down to different aspects if you're asking about business and career family and relationships health and well-being and then if you want to do uh, journal prompts, and then you have space on that side to write anything. If you really want to write in a book, I never write in my books because um, if I use it again, it's like, mm. so, <laughs> so that's basically what the guidebook, uh, the meaning section. pretty much it for the major arcana uh, let me get to minor there we go okay and then we have the royal families and then we start off with the king of pentacles instead of the ace and that's okay and what I really like about what she does in her guidebook is that she doesn't scrimp on the minors she does exactly the same thing as the majors and a lot of books don't do that so I really like that she does that so we get the there's the queen Okay, we have the Pentacle family, and like I said, it's the same. Okay, and then we have, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I messed up. Okay, <laughs> so she, um, I take that back. Okay, so chapter six is all of the, the, the court cards. And 
And so she, like I said, she doesn't scrimp on them, but she just does the court cards. Now I feel silly <laughs> saying that. Okay, and then we have your wands. And then she has the cups. And then she goes into the minor arcana. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> I'm so used to just looking in the guidebook that I, I totally forgot that that's how she split it up. All right, so she does start with the aces in the front. And um, like I said, same thing. She does not scrimp. She gives you the, the animal and the f message from it. And then the ace of cups and how the kingfisher um, goes with that card. And then you have your business and career, family relationships, health and well-being, and a journal prompt. And then you've got your space to write anything that you want. And flip to through the major arcana. And then um, exploring your deck. So in this chapter, she says that she's going to walk you through three spreads that she feels well, works well with this particular deck. And she, she says it's, you, it doesn't have to just be these three, but these are just um, different spreads that you can use. So we have the inner totem. And you got your card one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then um, you have your archetype spread. And this one, um, is just with the um, court cards. And then the third spread is the situation spread. And then just using the minor arcana in this one. And she doesn't give you any card pictures as to how to lay out the cards. And then if you want to get in contact with Lisa, and then you have some advertisement and some more. Oh yeah, this is um, Eugene's other deck that he collaborated with. And another deck from Luau. And, and Eugene Smith, Tarot in Wonderland. He also helped collaborate with that one. And then there's a suggested book. And Tarot Beyond the Basis this is another book that you can get from Luau. All right, so let's go ahead and shuffle these babies and see which what animal wants to pop up and say hi and give a message to somebody who needs it out there. And they do, as you can see, shuffle very well. They are um, easy on the hands because, yeah, sometimes some cards are just really stiff, but these are really nice. All right, one more. Four of Cups. We have Akitus. All right, four of cups. Doo, doo, doo. Doo, doo. Okay. 
message from Octopus is treasure? What treasure? That which you call treasure is just junk in my mind. The world is littered with things that sparkle and shine. But in all honesty, how many shiny things can actually one have? What am I looking for has to be more, do more, and truly move me. Otherwise, it's just another distraction and something else to take up my very limited time. It's easy to become bored and unaffected by the gifts that surround us. For just like the octopus, we live in a world of constant noise and flashing lights. There is always something trying to get our attention every second of every day. Someone, somewhere, is always trying to give us something we don't want or need, or trying to distract us with the bright, shiny objects. It is not surprising that in this constant barrage for our attention, we have become so overwhelmed that we can't see the gifts for the junk. The common octopus lives for a very short time, so he is skilled in quickly moving through the chaos that the four cups can bring. Overindulgence and distractions do not serve the octopus, and he is constantly aware that his time is coming to an end. All right, so concerning business and career, when the Four of Cups show up in a business reading, it may be a warning to you to not take on clients or projects that do not truly inspire you. Be selective, as you may end up cursing your decision further down the road. If it's about family and relationships, the octopus reminds you that the time here is short. Do not waste it on relationships that drain your energy or keep you in a state of depression. Other people have the ability to change our mood and the four of cups can go from boredom to despair very quickly. Be cautious about who you allow yourself to be around at this time. If it's about health and well-being, do not overdo anything right now. The energy is right for you to let yourself get carried away. The Four of Cups can indicate too much of a good thing. Do your best to find balance in your healing activities right now, as you might be setting yourself up for failure Failure, sorry, if you keep trying to push something that just isn't the right time for you. In the card of day journal prompts, what areas in your life are you being stubborn about? Is there something you should be doing but are ignoring or avoiding on purpose? Have you allowed yourself to become bored with your routine, life, and relationships? All right, so I don't know who needed to hear that, but Octopus has a message for you. And that is pretty much all I have for this deck. Let me know what you thought about it. Um, if you did buy it and you like it, please let me know. I, I'm always interested in hearing about people's experience with the deck. And um, if there is a um, deck you would like to see in a future video, go ahead and let me know and I will see what I can do because I am always collecting decks. But once again, thank you so much for spending your time with me and I do hope that you will join me with a future video but until then take care and goodbye my dears